how do we overcome some of that stigma that, that discriminates, uh, that, that says, well, if you're using this drug, uh, if, if you're, you're not smoking, uh, but you're smoking marijuana, or you're not using marijuana, but you're using cocaine, or you're using heroin, or you're abusing prescription drugs, or... That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. We just, we, we don't deal with it as, as one thing, mm -hmm. which is we're abused, uh, abusing substances because there's a deeper problem that someone is not addressing. And abusing yourself, you know, you're abusing your body. Um, and I don't think anybody, like we said in the beginning, I don't think anybody wants that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I've heard so many people say, well, they choose to do that every single day. Um, but it's a choice. It's a choice that they chose to relapse. They chose to, and that's a very gray area to me. Um, it's, it's very hard, and I think through my life experiences, um, I almost to a fault put myself in other people's shoes. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, like, it physically hurts me to think about that, mm -hmm. so. And it's, it's a whole different issue when we're talking about choice. It, it may, for a lot of people, have been a choice the first time they tried X drug. Um, and maybe it was a, cho a choice the second or third time. But at some point it stopped being a choice. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, if it didn't stop being a choice, they're not an addict. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that, that's what we forget a lot of times. Like when we talk about alcohol, uh, someone was telling me, if you, if you drink uh, a glass or two, uh, have a, a couple of drinks once or twice a week, um, you, that, that's one thing. But if every time you drink, you get drunk, and it's two, three, four, five, six, seven times, that's a whole different ballgame. Mm -hmm. If when you drink, you know you're going to get drunk, uh, you're on a different level. I think too. And choice kind of falls away. And people think, um, you know, there's functioning addicts and there's, there's non-functioning addicts is what mm -hmm. I hear. Um, and they think, oh, well, he keeps his job or she keeps her job and they, you know, they make good money and they keep their job and they pay all their bills and they do everything. And, you know, they're, they're living the good life. You know, he, he's not an addict cause he's not homeless. Um, I hear that a lot too, and I've seen it. Um, and there's that stigma, like. I don't even know how what the word to describe that would be because I feel like, you know, that person is probably deep down, you know, feeling the way that the homeless man is feeling trapped within their themselves, whether they're functioning or they're not. Um, I think that it's it's very easy for society to say, well, it's okay if he's an addict because he's he's functioning mm -hmm. um, instead of. You know, I think oftentimes that only lasts so often mm -hmm. um, until it, you know, it crashes and burns yeah. right before your eyes. Um, but I think it's easy for us to say, oh, it's okay. It's okay for them because, you know, he's white or it's okay for him because he's, you know, got a good job or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And we excuse ourselves. When, when we're the ones who are the addicts, we, we excuse ourselves because um, I still have a job, because I'm not homeless, because mm -hmm. it hasn't broken up my family yet, because this, that, or the other. The key word was yet. Yet. <laughs> right. Oh, that will never happen to me. Mm 